Hello, how you doing? This is Tim Sandal back with you with another video. And following on from last week's video, um, where we looked at bacterial spores, in this video we're going to have a look at fungi and fungal spores. Um, and these kind of themes match quite nicely. So to begin with, there are different types of fungi. First thing, and most obvious to, to many people, are the macroscopic fungi, the large masses that form um, mushrooms and toadstools. And on the slide is a mushroom, happens to be an edible um, mushroom. But of course, you're never going to find anything like this in a pharmaceutical facility. Otherwise, it's serious trouble. Um, but there, there are microscopic fungi or where there are enough of them they might be visible to the eye and here we have a difference between filamentous fungi and yeast like fungi so with filamentous fungi here's a picture of um, the kind of fungus that will cause bread to go bad so it's uh, mucor which is a black or melanized um, fungus and it kind of grows in these long strands of thin material which are called hyphae and then they have heads which can contain spores. Then there are yeast like fungi so the picture on the right hand side of the slide is of a yeast called Saccharomyces cerevisiae and that is used in the brewing industry so it makes nice glasses of beer on a nice summer's day as shown on the slide and then there are fungi that um, have elements of both filamentous fungi and of yeast like fungi and perhaps the most well known of these types of fungi is candida and there's a particular species which is shown on the left hand side of the screen which is candida albicans and this is something that we'll carry but when it ends up in the wrong parts of the body, it can cause a disease which is known as thrush. Now, some people have said that some of the pictures on the video are sometimes a little bit graphic. So instead of a, a horrible picture of thrush, you've got a nice songbird instead. Um, OK, so what's of interest in terms of uh, clean rooms and pharmaceutical facilities, healthcare settings and so on? Well, it's the filamentous fungi and the yeast like fungi and they look very different under a microscope as these drawings contain and in both cases they're far larger than bacteria now in terms of the distribution although we do carry yeast yeasts are far less common in a clean room than the stranded filamentous fungi so it's about the ratio of 90% uh, filamentous fungi when it is found compared to 10% of yeast like fungi. And these things look very different. Um, so in the previous video, we looked at bacterial spores. So I've used the same image here on the right hand side of the screen. So this is uh, spores of um, bacillus. And on the left hand side of the screen, are, is an electron micrograph of um, a filamentous fungus. This one happens to be um, Aspergillus, and you can see the long woven strands of hyphae and the spores that are on the top. So, what are fungal spores? Because it's fungal spores that do present the the biggest risk to the clean room environment. Well, fungal spores. Um, are more like seeds in the plant world um, than bacterial spores and that kind of reflects that fungi are a higher form of life so just as a an aside you have the kingdom of bacteria you have the kingdom of plants and in the middle is the kingdom of fungi so fungi produce spores in order to reproduce and they will push these spores out much like a plant would so you kind of pick up um, a plant sometimes and those little 
fluffy puffy ones and you blow them and seeds will disperse like a dandelion or something um, and fungal spores are very similar some fungi also produce another type of spore and these are called chlamydospores and these are designed to help the fungus survive in poor environmental conditions when the fungus is subject to to stress there's a lack of nutrients low levels of water and and so on and these are also of concern um, and these are you know in some cases common building contaminants but again shouldn't be present in clean rooms now the big problem that fungal spores um, present is unlike bacterial spores which we get discussed last week these are static bacterial spores fungal spores can easily be dispersed in air streams and via water droplets or in association with other particles and they will land in certain locations and they can reproduce them under favorable conditions and there's a fascinating electron micrograph on the screen where somebody's managed to capture the image of fungal dispersal so it's quite an impressive um, image and it shows just how far fungal spores can actually um, travel so again in terms of what's going on with the fungal spores again we've got another interesting electron micrograph and on the left hand side we've got a diagram showing how the spores or condia leave how they might germinate in the right location conditions they start forming the hyphae again and that will then develop into this um, spores developing um, and when we get too many hyphae then that forms a bigger and bigger mass which is called the mycelium and that starts to become visible to the naked eye now fungal spores are not generally as resistant as bacterial spores but they are still relatively resistant to disinfectants so again making sure the disinfectant has the right contact time and it's of the right concentration remains really important and there's a double challenge that some of these filamentous fungi there there's types of, of fungi called um, aspergillus and penicillium and cladosporium and fusarium and so on and they can excrete enzymes that and these enzymes can also sometimes deactivate disinfectant so you know another concern um, there now in terms of where these fungal spores are coming from they're either part of the built environment which we'll look at in a second or they're coming in most case from outside so particularly things coming into clean rooms and it's a similar theme to when we looked at um, bacterial spores last time it's things that are coming in that have been exposed to the environment so there's the importance of taking away wrappings things that are wet and particularly cardboard as shown on the uh, slide there uh, cardboard again is a strong source of um, fungal spores and get mold forming there so again we don't want cardboard anywhere near the clean room um, okay so the other thing was the fungi associated with the as built environment so on the left hand side we have a nice shiny clean room with an isolator inside it um, now fungi can form in the wall behind the vinyl in the, in the clean room particularly with plasterboard and here we're particularly concerned about a black mold called cladosporium and that can build up so whether we get torn vinyl and particularly an exposure of the of what's behind the the vinyl then we have a serious risk of spores so every time we get any torn vinyl um, we must immediately um, step away from the area I either try and cover it with something increase levels of disinfection and get that repaired as quickly as possible okay so this is bringing this video to an end it's introduced the topic of fungi fungal spores in particular
and this video um, has come from me Tim Sandal and um, it remains for me to say um, thank you for your attention and um, good luck with the rest of your day and um, until next time I'll be back with you with another video looking at all things to do with clean rooms and microbiology and contamination and so on so cheerio bye